Adventures by Morse. Carson E. Morse presents... Dead Men Prowl, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder... Come with me. If there is a terror more deadly than fear of the unseen, the unknown, it is that of facing a horror your senses tell cannot exist and yet which you can very plainly see. And that's what is happening in the coast village of Holman, where twice the dead body of Doc Sims was seen to prowl and two other bodies had risen from their resting places in the little morgue to carry on strange and sinister antics. It was on the second occasion of Doc Sims prowling that there occurred an incident deadly in its intent, weirdly desperate. On the morning following the first night of mystery and terror, Captain Friday had taken Martin Stanley and Dr. Jamie Croft with him to Doc Sims' house in search of clues. He left Gail Stanley, Carmel Ruiz, and her cousin Andres at his cottage. Dr. Croft had gone to the morgue to check on the bodies, and the captain and Stanley had proceeded to the Sims' house. They went to Doc Sims' study to examine his private papers and look for his will. But instead, they found a handkerchief belonging to the girl Carmel. Evidently, she had been there before them. They discovered a wall safe and were in the act of opening it when, for the third time, the body of Doc Sims appeared. It entered the study, shot Martin Stanley, and attacked Captain Friday. When Dr. Croft arrived from the morgue, he found two inert figures huddled on the floor. Uh, uh, Captain. Captain Friday. uh, Break your neck, Doc Sims. Here. Let go my throat. Get hold of the self, Captain. Come out of it, man. You will bang me over the head. Oh, are you, Dr. Croft? Dr. Croft, did you see him? Did you see him? See whom? Doc Sims. At least his body. Why? Why, no. I did. Shot young Stanley and then got me. How's Stanley? Is he dead? Don't worry about Stanley. The bullet just grazed his head. But see here, Captain. Do you mean to tell me you saw Doc Sims walking again? I did, and there's no argument this time. Hmm. His body was gone from the morgue, all right. Oh, what a head I've got. Dr. Croft, looked. Look at the safe. It's been opened. I see it has. I don't get it. Opening his own safe and stealing his own will. I wish Doc Sims would make up his mind whether he's dead or not. Captain Friday, are you certain it was Doc Sims? If it wasn't, it was his dental quill. Why? I picked up this handkerchief when I came into the room. It belongs to Carmel Ruiz, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was here when we came in. Which indicates that she has been here. That looks bad for Carmel. Oh, nuts. But this is a handkerchief. Well, I can't help it. A kid like her couldn't get mixed up in this. She's just out of a convent. Doesn't know what it's all about. Oh, I know all about that, but it doesn't get rid of the fact that someone dropped Carmel's handkerchief here. Yeah. Uh, See here, how about Andres? He's in love with his cousin. Might have been carrying a handkerchief. Uh, Uh Uh-oh. Stanley's coming around. Close call, my boy. Better look after him, Doctor. I'm going to have a look at the safe. You better wait. Your knees will buckle if you get to your feet too quickly. I couldn't feel any worse. Here, give me a hand. Oh, my head. Uh, I told you. The guy must have swung from the floor. Yeah, there. Head's clearing up a little. Righto. Uh, I'll see about Stanley. And Doc Sims sure made a mess of his papers. Looks like a whirlwind hit the safe. Queer. A dead man should suddenly desire to rifle his own safe. Yeah, especially when his rightful heir was about to put his hands on the will. Mm, it's a queer business all around. <sighs> No. Now, now, now. Stanley, oh, my boy, you, uh, now, now, take it easy. So far as I've been able to find, there's no indication around the house that Doc Sims anticipated either a natural or violent death last night. Captain, day. Captain, can you give me a hand here? Uh, Stanley's being difficult. Yeah, okay, Doc. Now, now, here, here, here. Stanley, Stanley. Grab his legs, Captain. He's putting up a battle, huh? Ah, he's juicily belligerent. Now, take it easy, fella. If we can hold him down for a few moments, he'll come out of it all right. I've got his leg. Let go of me. You let go of me. I don't care if you are my uncle. Oh, you can hold him long enough for me to get a glass of water. That should bring him out of it. Here, but go to it. I've got him. All right, but watch out. Won't take but a moment. Now, easy now, Stanley. You're going to be all right. Go. Hi there, doctor. Step on it. I've got him, but that's about all. All right now. Hold him. 
I'll give him a dash of cold water in the face. There. That'll take care of him. You can let go now. Oh, I don't mind informing you that most of that water went down my neck. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's a regular tiger. Look at the scratches on my face. Little Ardine will take care of it. You'll have to handle your patient yourself from now on, Doctor. I'm going to finish looking through these papers in the safe. I doubt if you'll find the will. I don't expect to, but you never can tell, though. Hello, Stanley. Mm, feeling pretty rotten, eh? Oh, rotten. Coming to all right, has he? Mm, he'll do. Should be taken back to the cottage. Yeah. Hello. Here's something. Say, look at this, Doctor. A duplicate of a letter from Doc Sims to Andrew Walters. What's that? A letter? And what a letter. Anything to do with this situation? Has it. Just listen. Andrew Walters, this is to inform you that I, Dr. C.N. Sims, have discovered your real identity as well as enough of your background and history to make your presence in this community undesirable. Unless you are willing to come to such terms as I see fit to impose, I shall at once reveal your identity and turn you over to the proper authorities, which, of course, you realize means nothing less than the gallows. Phew. My word is... Does that mean that my uncle had something on Andrew Walters? Had something? <laughs> looks to me like he had everything. This looks like the key to the whole situation. Who do you suppose Andrew Walters was, anyway? Mm, nothing less than a hunted murderer, sounds like. I wonder if this note drove Walters to hang himself. I wonder. Do you think a man would hang himself to keep himself from being hanged by the state? Yes, but he didn't have to hang. Doc Sims offered him a way out. Agree to his terms, and he'd keep his mouth shut. Must have been pretty bad. Anyway, Walters preferred to die instead of coming to terms. Uh, maybe. Anyway, we've got a clue to this business. Right now, I want to get Walters' fingerprints and shoot them over to the city for a check with the police criminal files. How will you get them to the city? I'll get the grocery supply boat to take them over. It'll be in at noon. We've got to work fast now. I want to run over the rest of Doc Sims' house, and then I want to go through Walters' place. I'd like to find this original letter. Uh, see here, Stanley. Uh, think you can make it back to Captain Friday's cottage alone? How do you feel? Nauseated. Mm, naturally. Now, the question is, would you rather drag yourself over to my place or lie down in the lounge here while Dr. Croft and I finish looking around? Me stay in this place along with a corpse sneaking around with a gun? Okay, you run along back to the cottage then. Take it easy, fella. You'll feel better out in the fresh air. All right, but... But what? Well, just remember, if you find that well, it belongs to Gail and me. Now, listen, Stanley. No one's trying to beat you out of your estate. At least not in this crowd. You'll get the will if we find it. Now run along. Oh, I feel rotten. Oh, uh, by the way, Stanley, tell Andres that we're going to search his uncle's place in about ten minutes, and if he wants to be in on it, tell him to wait for us out in front. I'll tell him. Oh, and don't mention this letter. You don't need to worry. That clip on the side of the head took a lot of belligerence out of our young friend. Yeah, that in the sight of his dead uncle. Come along, Doctor. There's nothing more in here. Take a look upstairs and then shoot over to Andrew Walters' place. Dr. Sims must have been a queer sort of codger. Yeah, shut off from everyone. Sometimes he wouldn't be seen for days at a time. Oh, here's the stairway. Beastly dark. There's a light here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Oh, hold it, Doctor. Do you see what I see? My word. Again? Yeah. It's Doc Sims again. But see here, Captain... He's stone dead. Sprawled out on his face, just as we found him twice before. But Captain Friday, this man's dead. He's been dead for a good many hours now. It couldn't have been he who attacked Oh, yeah? Him. Well, I'm telling you, Doctor, dead or not, I recognize those clothes and that face. And they're the same. Now, let's turn him on his back. All right. <clears throat> you can see quite, quite plainly that this body couldn't walk. Yeah, I can see plenty. <gasps> Hello. Now what? Look here. Papers stuffed in his coat pocket. Nonsense. Well, here they are. Here's the copy of the will, and here's a sealed envelope. Sealed envelope? Yeah. It says, to whom it may concern in case of my death. Oh, oh see here, Captain. Uh, it looks like our dead friend here walked in, knocked us out, and raided the safe hall, right? And got this far and making a getaway and collapsed. Oh, rubbish, man. Okay, Doctor, then you explain it. I, I don't pretend to. What are you going to do with that will and the letter? Hang on to them until we get back to the cottage. I have a hunch that everybody's going to be interested in them. Mm, undoubtedly. So look here. I've got more than I expected already out of this place. I'll leave the rest until later. Anxious to get over to Walter's house, hmm? As a matter of fact, I am. Let's go. Oh, what about Doc Sims' body here? We'll put him on the lounge in the study and lock him in. 
Aren't you afraid he'd walk off again? I think I can take care of that. <laughs> oh. We'll not only lock him in, but we'll tie him down. That'll hold him. <laughs> now, come on. Come on, give me a hand. You ready? Mm. All right. Up we go. All right. <sighs> it's the third time I've had to play ambulance for this bird. It's going to be the last. Uh, uh, is this where you want him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get down now. Yeah. yeah. I saw a piece of cord around his... Oh, here it is. Tie his feet together and round underneath the lounge. But grab the other end, Doctor. Jove, Captain. You're not serious. You think not? Put a half hitch on the leg of the lounge. But see here, my dear chap, you're losing your perspective. Yeah. I suppose you're politely telling me that I'll get the royal raspberries from the gang in the Hall of Justice over in the city if they saw me hog-tying a dead body. Well, it is rather ridiculous. Not in this case, it isn't. Doc Sims is dead, and he simply got to quit prowling around. I'm constable of Holman now, and I say it's against the law of what's right and decent for a dead man to go gallivanting around. Have fun and hold on, eh? <laughs> Something like that, Doctor. Yeah, yeah. How's that? I've never seen a more thorough job of trussing. Okay, then let's get going. Is there a key in the door? Yes. Good. Well, we're through here. Go ahead, I'll lock up. The villagers ever got wind of this prowling of the dead business, there'd be one swell hullabaloo. Yeah, but what about the father of the murdered halfwit boy? Didn't you tell him that this that his son's body had disappeared from the morgue? No. I intimated that he'd feel a lot better if he didn't go to the morgue until it was necessary, and he took the hint. I see. There's another thing. We don't find the Hartley boy's body before the inquest tomorrow morning. It's going to be very embarrassing. Mm -hmm. In that case, it seems to me we'll have to give them the whole story. Yeah, which is what I don't want to do. Unless the village knows about what's going on, the easier it's going to be to work. Go ahead, doctor. Let's get outside. Whew. My word, what a musty hole. I didn't realize it until we got out in the fresh air. Uh, just a minute while I lock up. Yeah, there. Now, Andrew Walter's place. Mm, it will be interesting. Man? Yeah? Why? Mm. Isn't it said that a man who hangs himself leaves his phantom self behind to stalk the death chamber? <laughs> Captain Friday and Dr. Croft have tied the wandering body of Doc Sims to a lounge in the old Sims house. After the dead body apparently had made a murder attempt on both the captain and the boy Stanley. Just now the two have locked up the house and with certain private papers from the Sims safe in his pocket, Captain Friday is leading the way to the second murder house, Andrew Walter's house, where last night he had hanged himself. I have a hunch we'll find plenty of answers to our questions in Walter's papers. Watch it, Captain. We seem to have Andres with us. Ah, senors. I thought he'd be along. Please, senors, if you go to my Uncle Andrew Walter's home, I wish to go with you, huh? All right, come along, Andres. Feeling better after your catnap, huh? Ah, oh, see, si. I am very much refreshed. The street's still empty. Mass meeting must still be in session. See, si. I go by town hall. Everybody, very much excitement. Talk, talk. Very bad. Bad? See, si, everybody mm. very much mad. I think it'd be very bad for a guilty man if they find him. Yeah? <laughs> so you don't mean those old mossbacks have gotten themselves worked up for mob action? I do not know, senor. It make me afraid to hear them. Oh, what do you know about that, doctor? <laughs> As coroner and constable, looks like we'll have our hands full. Hmm. Andres, are you sure you're not overstating matters? Oh, no, doctor. No, it is as I say. Uh, here's Andrew Waller's place. Shouldn't have to spend much time here. Let's take a quick look, see, and then go back to the cottage and look over the spoils. Spoils? Yeah, the papers. All right, step in. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, Andres, young Stanley's all right, I suppose. No, no, he feels very bad. Carmel and Mr. Stanley's sister, they put him to bed on the lounge in the front room. Mm, he'll be well taken care of. Two solicitors, young women. <laughs> there is no need for Carmel to bathe his head, I do not think. <laughs> Bathing his head, eh? That irks you. Hi, Andres. Come here. Uh, see, si, Senor Capitan. Now look here. You say you held a long conversation with Andrew Walters last night, just before you left to meet Carmel at the train. See, si, this is correct. Where were you? 
Here in this living room? Uh, this is it. What did you talk about? Well, he tell me how very happy he was to have Caramel and me with him. Mm. He said how he had been very lonely in ten years he had been in this place by himself. Yeah? He's glad, huh? Didn't seem depressed or despondent? Oh, no, no, senor. Very happy. When I left, he said, Well, bless you, my son. He said this, and then he said, If Carmel, she is as agreeable as you, we will be very happy household. Mm. Those were his last words to you, hmm? See, si. And then, when you'd left, he went upstairs and hanged himself. What do you make of that, Dr. Croft? Well, doesn't make sense, Captain. Something's goofy, all right. So look here, Andres. Where does your uncle keep his private papers? Uh, in this desk here. He have a small iron-bound box. Yeah? I know all about it, huh? Well, when I come, he show me his will. And then I see him open up this uh, bottom drawer where he keep the box. Hmm. Mm. You've uh, seen his will, then? Oh, for certain, man. What did it say? According to his will, he have give half of everything he have to Carmel, and the other half he have give to me. Did he say how much? Mm, maybe two, three hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Besides all this property, of which there is maybe one thousand acres. Two or three hundred thousand dollars in the bank? You mean cash? Si, senor capitan. Uh, he tell me he's afraid of investments. Mm. Well, we'll see if we can find that will. You say it's the bottom drawer? Si. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah. Here's the iron box, all right. Mm -hmm. It will lift right out, you see? Uh, yeah, it's got a combination lock on it. See, uh, there is a little black book in the top drawer, the little drawer there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the combination is in it. It is, huh? Mm. There's just a lot of junk in here. Oh, wait a minute. This might be it. Dr. Croft, will you try the lock as I read the numbers off? Yes. Begin at seven. Seven. Then to three. Mm. Three. Back to nine. Nine. All right, now. Clear back to one. And that's it. Yes, that's it. It's open. Mm. Not much in it. Oh, there. There it is in that heavy envelope. Yeah? Yes, yes. Here's the will. I'm getting quite a collection of papers. Oh, but, senor, this will... Well, this will, it belongs to Carmel and me. Yeah, there's plenty of time to talk about that one. Listen. What you say? Shh. Somebody coming into the house. Jove. They say a murderer always returns to the scene of his crime. Why do you think it's the killer? But who else? At least we can surprise them. Nobody knows we're here. Captain Friday! Captain Friday, are you in here? Oh, it's Gail Stanley. What's she doing here? Yeah, you two wait here. Miss Stanley, we're in here. My cousin Carmel is with her. Wait, stay here. Hey, what's going on? Come on in here. Now, you too, Stanley. Captain Friday, we had to leave. The whole village is down at your cottage. Oh, it's a trouble. Oh, please, please do something. Carmel, what is it? I tell you, Captain, they would have hanged us. Oh, you should have seen Wait a minute, wait a minute now. My word, it can't be that bad. Oh, but it is, it is. Now, wait a minute. Stanley, you do the talk and the rest of you keep quiet. Well, it was horrible. The first we knew, 20 or 30 people were in front of the cottage. They were yelling and throwing things. What's that? Throwing things at my house? Yes, and when I went to the door, somebody threw something and hit me in the face. Well, I slammed the door as quickly as I could. And By Jove. An old-fashioned mob, eh? Oh, and they called us names and kept yelling to bring out Andres. What? Well, they called for me? Oh, I'm a son of a gun. Yes, and then we ran to the back of the house and crawled out the bedroom window and got away without them seeing mm, us. Jolly little party. Well, Martin thought you'd be over here, and that's why we came. What do they want Andres for? Maybe... Maybe they think I kill all these people. Uh, just like those old mossbacks. They get screwy ideas sometimes. <laughs> well, Captain, what are you going to do about it? Remember, you had yourself elected constable this morning. Yeah, and I'm going to do plenty. Oh, crazy nitwits. I knew things would be popping, but I didn't expect anything like this. Mm. <laughs> Looks like they got themselves pretty well steamed up at their own town meeting. Yeah, a couple of big mouths probably got up and gave them fire and brimstone. White. Oh, see here, what are you up to? Gonna go out and clean them up. Buckle my gun out in plain sight. That'll bring them down to earth. Like company? Okay, if you want to come along. Enjoy it immensely. Now, come on, then. The rest of you stay here till we get back. Please, do you think it's safe? There's nothing to worry about. Stanley, you and Andres take care of the girls. Oh, Andres, everything's so off. Oh, please. Please, you must not be frightened. 
If there is danger, I will not let it hurt you. Martin, lie down, please. You're so sick. Looks like we came to Holman for our own funerals instead of putting Dr. Sims in the ground. Oh, please, Martin, don't be so morbid. Fine business getting shot at by my own uncle. Dead uncle at that. Oh, it's the most terrible thing I ever heard of. You, you don't think Captain Friday and Dr. Croft will let anything happen to us, do you? What can they do? Didn't the thing that shot at me knock out Captain Friday? Well, me, I think the Capitan will do plenty. Rod, he's in the same boat with the rest of us. But they have the whole village turned against us. We're not only fighting something we don't know about, but the village, too. But they're so brave. They'll fix everything. Oh, please, my cousin, you do not worry. Huh? Huh. Personally, I'm going to keep my eyes on those fellas. You know what they're planning to do, Gail? Martin, you shouldn't talk that way about them. Yeah, well, they're looking for Dr. Sims' will. Captain Friday said he was going to hang on to it, too, if he found it. Well, he has my uncle's will, too. I do not think he will do anything bad with it. Well, you got a lot more faith in him than I have. Martin, what in the world are you talking about? Captain Friday's an old-timer here. He's got the lay of the ground. We haven't. But I don't see... There's a lot of money involved in this thing. What's to keep him from grabbing it off? I tell you, he's slick. Oh, don't be absurd. How could he? And even if there were no wills, the law would see that we got what was ours. Yeah? How do you know what angles he may have? Well, I do not think so. I don't care what you think. Mighty funny the way he and this Croft guy took us in, keeping us where they have an eye on us. Only telling us what they want us to know. You mustn't say that about Dr. Croft. I like him. Well, I'd like to know something about him myself. Well, if Captain Friday say he is all right, that is all I care. Bunk. Oh, I don't know what to do. Besides, it seems to me if you wish to not stay at the senor's home, you do not need to. Why you don't go about your own business? Go out and get torn to pieces by that fool mob? Well, then, it seems to me if you accept the Captain's protection, you should not say this sort of thing about him. Preaching, huh? If you wish to call it that. Ah, uh, you make me sick. You stop talking about Andres like that. Ah, uh, pipe down, kid. Mom. This is enough. I do not care if you are hurt. You say one more little thing like this to my cousin. Oh, for the love of mine. And if you wish to speak with me in future, you please to change the tone in your voice. I think you deserve that, Martin. Oh, please, we mustn't quarrel. Everything will be all right if we just keep... All right, here we are. The war's over. They, they didn't hurt you. <laughs> do I look hurt? But where's Dr. Croft? I sent him over to Doc Sims' house to check on things. What right does he have over there? Uh-oh. What's the matter with you, Stanley? He's always irritable when he isn't feeling well. Oh, cut it out, Gail. I want to know what business Dr. Croft has in my uncle's house alone. Well, if you must know, we found Doc Sims' body sprawled on the stairs over there. Oh, Doc Sims. Oh, no. Yeah. We locked it in the study. I asked him to drop in and see that it was all right before coming back. The, the body of my uncle? That's what I said. And was he dead? You never saw a deader body. But, but I saw him. I saw him. I saw him raise the gun and shoot me. Yeah. You haven't got anything on me. Just the same, we found him stone dead. Please, things like that can happen in the convent. They taught yes, us that Yes, yes, you... I know. But see here. The moment we're in Andrew Walter's house. You're all to come upstairs. We'll take a look at the room where he hanged himself. Please, do I have to go? I'm afraid so, Carmel. Oh, no. Uh, just for a moment. Just to point out the place where you first saw the body. Uh, please, senor. I could do that. It'll be necessary for both of you to go. But not Martin and me. No, if you two would rather wait in here alone. Oh, yes, please. Okay, Dr. Croft will be over any minute now. Found the body of that half-wit Hartley boy yet? Please, why did you have to say that? Just wondered. Oh, cut it out, Stanley. You know Carmel's uneasy about visiting that room upstairs? Well, come on, let's get it over. Please close the door when you go out. The last time I was on these stairs... Oh, please, Carmel, you do not think about it. Just hang on to me, huh? But they're so dark. You coming? Uh, see, si, senor, we're almost behind you. I'd rather not go in. No, you will be brave for Andres, eh? Huh? All right, right in here. Mm, plenty of daylight in this room. Just the stairway in the halls that are dark. Oh, please take me away from here. Now then, the body was lying on the cot, was it, Andres? Uh, si, senor. Uh -huh. uh, but where is the cot? Oh, we used it to carry the body to the morgue. Just where was the cot sitting when you saw it? Uh, over there against the wall, just to the left of this window. All right, Carmel? Yes. Yes, let's go away. Look out, Captain! Look out! Andres! Andres, you shot! I've got him, Captain! I've got him! Hang on, on Dr. Croft. I'm coming. Where are you, Dr. Croft? At the bottom of the stairs. I'm coming. Roll down. Rode all the way down the stairs with him. Get a light, man. 
Lying still. Uh, Must be knocked out. Here's my flash. Look here, Doctor. It's Rich Hartley's half-wit boy. Captain, you mean I rolled down those stairs with a dead man in my arms? The entire population of the Holman City morgue, for some unaccountable reason, appears to be rising up in arms against the living. First, old Doc Sims, dead of natural causes. Then, an attack by Andrew Waters, dead by hanging. And now, finally, the Hartley boy, shot through the heart, has invaded the haunts of living people, apparently in a direct attempt to commit murder. This is the weird and wonderful story of Dead Men Prowl. Chapter 6, entitled Life History of Prowlers, will come to you next week at the same hour. You are listening to Adventures by Morse.